Today we're going to show you how this works just like this, so stick around. Hey everybody, welcome back to the garage and today we are going to talk about how uh, carburetors work a lot like EFI systems. Now, I'm not going to go into details on how to tune a carburetor for a couple reasons. One of them, I'm not the best at tuning carburetors. And the second one, I'm there's so many videos out there. There's just thousands of carburetor tuning videos out there. You can find very good examples of them. But what I do want to do is kind of enlighten some people on how the uh, systems that we use on modern EFI fuel injected products work just like the carburetors back in the day. We can do some uh, correlation in between the two. And so maybe if you're an EFI guy and you're having to work on a carburetor, it might shed some light on a couple things. Or if you're a carburetor guy and you're trying to get into EFI, some of these systems match up just in different ways and we can draw Draw some conclusions. Now, if as I said, if you're here for carburetor tuning, go look for a different video by somebody else that is a pro in carburetor tuning. If you're here for EFI tuning, well, you're in the right place. You're just at the wrong video. We're not really getting into tuning so much as just comparing things. So check out tuning101.com. Uh, that takes you directly to our YouTube homepage where there's just hundreds of videos on tuning. So it's a good place to start. But for now, let's just kind of dive into the carburetor, take a look at it, and we'll explore some of the different systems on the carburetor that tie back to what we know them as on an EFI system. Okay, what we have here is an Edelbrock. They call this a Carter style carburetor because of the setup on it. There's really two big ones out there, the Carters and the uh, Hollies, which are the double pumpers where you have the bowls on the end. And uh, so we're just gonna focus on kind of the basics on this and we'll talk about some of the differences between the two because the uh, Hollies are gonna use uh, metering jets, whereas this is gonna use metering rods where we dive in here. But that's really where all this starts off because if you look at a uh, mass airflow sensor, all it is is a metering device and it meters airflow much like a carburetor does. And then the ECU uses that metered airflow to determine how much fuel needs to be injected into the intake in order to get proper combustion. Well, on these devices, we have jets or metering rods like this that are going to use the airflow being pulled through the carburetor to determine how much fuel. And so by changing these different jets to sizes, bigger, smaller, metering rods, bigger, smaller, spring rates in this case to different uh, things, we are what we're affecting is that we're taking a amount of air and adjusting how much fuel is being added for that amount of air much like we do whenever we go into EFI and we say okay we're measuring this much amount of air and then uh, we need to enrich in it or lean it out. And we do that by looking at AFRs. Guys don't really use AFRs to tune carburetors, but you can. There's no reason why you can't put a wide band on a carbureted car. Get a wide band reading and then use that to tell whether or not you need to go up in a jet size or adjust your metering rods in order to get more fuel. So whereas we are using airflow directly on the mass airflow to uh, correlate that into the pounds per hour of air that we're flowing through the intake track, we have a couple different things going on in here as far as how we get the amount of airflow to match the amount of fuel. And that is by using Venturi jets. As the fuel or the air comes through these Venturis down in here, let me go ahead and zoom in so we can see better. So as air is pulled through these Venturis down in here, it is accelerated through there because of the curve on the Venturi. And whenever that air is accelerated, it creates an area of low pressure. We normally would call that vacuum, but you have to realize that vacuum is actually an absence of pressure. So the higher rate air that's going through the middle of the Venturi creates that low pressure section, and in turn, it draws fuel in, actually pulls fuel out of the bowls, and that is what is going to determine your airflow or your air fuel mixture ratio and then the amount of fuel that can be pulled in is based on your metering rods or your jets if you're on a Holly. Now, if we were to look down inside of here, you're gonna see that we have four Venturis on this setup. And what we have is a primary and a secondary area on there. And as we rotate our throttle body open here, let me make sure I'm getting it right. So we rotate our throttle body open, our primaries are open, we get to a certain point where our secondaries start to open back here. Hopefully you can see that. Well, the way to think of this is that whenever these secondaries opening, that is when we're going into what we consider power enrichment 
on the uh, EFI setups. And so while we're cruising around partial throttle, we're just running off the primaries down here. Uh, we're running close to stoic so we can get efficient burn, high mileage, things like that. And then whenever we really lace into it and we're looking for the extra power, that's whenever we really get into opening up the secondaries and we have a second set of jets or meters that we use to dial in that secondary. So where we go into an EFI tune and we set up something like our power enrichment ratio, on this you have your primary jets which are going to uh, be your stoic commanded fuel basically and then you have your secondary jets which are going to flow even more to add to your power enrichment to make sure that you're running that safe enrichment under a high end acceleration. Now there's a couple different things also that kind of correspond to what we see on EFI and those are things like accelerator pumps. Okay, the next thing that we're going to be looking at is like tipping. And, and carburetors use a, an accelerator pump design that actually whenever you start to open the throttle up, it gives it a little extra amount of fuel to help with that lean spike whenever you start to get that onrush of air. We use different things like fuel on wall calculations, uh, you know, uh, predicted torque, throttle uh, variations, all these different things that say whenever we move from one state to another, when we go from solid state to transient, add additional fuel in order to counteract the air. This does the exact same thing, only it's mechanical. So once again, there's a direct correlation to how this worked whenever it was designed to whenever they started doing EFI, they just translated that over into a way that the EFI is replicating what the carburetor does. And so we're not necessarily uh, waiting directly on the airflow change on an EFI system to command tipping. We're looking more at whenever we're in a transient state. And that's why things like dynamic airflow allows it to go out and do some predictions saying that if we have a throttle input change like this or an accelerator input change like this, we know we're going to get more air in rush in. And so we're going to start adding fuel. Well, they mechanically did that by putting an accelerator pump on there that as soon as you start moving the uh, throttle, it's going to go ahead and give it a little extra squirt of fuel to uh, counteract the additional air that's suddenly going to rush in because whenever we're looking at our, our throttle bodies down here at the bottom, we're pretty much closed. And the nice thing about that is, is we're using different other air metering systems on here in this case, idle bleed screws to keep the motor running that are allowing a specific amount of air or fuel to get into the system without having any throttle in there. And then whenever we go off the idle, much like we do on an EFI setup, when we move off the idle table into an airflow table, uh, it's going to have a rush of air that comes in because we're cracking this open all of a sudden. And it doesn't take much that once we crack these things open, we go from almost closed to quite a bit of volume, the first couple degrees of this opening up. And in turn, we get a lot of air right off the bat. And so we have to have that in acceleration enrichment that's gonna rush in there and You'll notice on something that has an accelerator pump that it is a squirt. If you were to open this thing up and keep the throttle open, it squirts initially. Once it gets past the initial squirt, the Venturis then are metering the air properly to keep the fuel where we want to be. So we just have to counteract that initial onrush of air, much like we do on tip-in. Kind of one of the last but not least things that we can look at is the choke on these things. And, and the cool thing about it is, is we carry over the same mentality uh, of the choke into EFI, whereas back in the day we would throw off or we would close off airflow in an attempt to enriching up startup fueling. We need that additional fuel to get the motor started up, get the motor warmed up, the same ordeal. That's why we have a startup uh, table that we normally operate off of for a few seconds or until we reach a critical engine temp, which a lot of these older chokes may have been uh, temperature related or, uh, or temperature controlled or mechanically controlled. This was a mechanically controlled choke from the looks of it. Uh, and then what is happening is we're getting that initial enrichment whenever we get to a certain point we can turn the choke off or if it is a uh, temperature based choke or an electric choke it'll open up and then you're going to get standard idle airflow well we're doing the same thing on efi where we have a commanded eq ratio where we're flowing an additional 20 30 percent of fuel during the initial startup of it to get the car up and running operating temp and going from there then we revert back over to our standard mass airflow volumetric efficiency or dynamic airflow to do all of our metering now one of the things to keep in mind on a setup like this a carburetor versus efi this is mass airflow this is the equivalent of mass airflow, not speed density so much because the way speed density works is it uses 
a load based calculation off of RPM and manifold pressure to calculate the amount of air, whereas this is literally using the airflow itself to calculate the amount of air, which in turn actually calculates the amount of fuel, much like a mass airflow sensor does. So you have to think of this in a way of a mass airflow sensor works that the more airflow that we're registering through the sensor or the device, the more fuel that we get in turn. And so in that aspect, both a mass airflow sensor and a carburetor are air metering devices that then provide fuel based on the amount of air that is metered. Well, hopefully that helps to give you some insight on the correlation between the two. It's a really neat concept to see how we started back in the day using carburetors and technology nowadays is basically using the same uh, style of air metering to determine the amount of fuel. Now, what we did on carburetors is the air was consistent. We changed the jets to make sure that the fuel was being metered properly for the amount of air. Whereas on an EFI system, even though the air is consistent, we're changing the way that the air is being uh, read in order to change the amount of fuel. The end result is the same. We're looking for that AFR that we're commanding at all times to make sure it stays in line. Uh, it's, carburetors are really magnificent devices. There's a reason why people still run them today, have great luck with them, make great amounts of horsepower of them. Now, you lose some of the very fine point adjustment that we have on EFIs, uh, and so we can really fine tune a vehicle across the entire range from startup all the way to wide open throttle, a little bit easier or maybe a little bit cleaner. I won't even say easier, but the nice thing about a carburetor is if you have enough knowledge and you uh, dive into it and do the process right of getting it set up, it is going to operate very well from you know startup all the way up to redline. You're going to create a safe fueling strategy off the amount of air that the motor is bringing in much like what we're trying to accomplish whenever we do EFI tuning. So I just wanted to do a quick little video breakdown to, uh, to kind of tie these things together. That way, if you are, as I said, coming from the EFI world and trying to look at carburetors and understand what's going on, well, just think of it like your mass airflow sensor. You are literally just measuring the amount of air and then providing the correct amount of fuel through metering jets, metering rods, things like that. Or if you're in the carburetor and you're saying, man, all this electronic stuff is so mind scrambling, it's not that complicated because if you know how to work on a carburetor and you know how that thing meters air to provide fuel, we're effectively doing that through the software. We're taking air across a sensor, much like we would take air across the Venturi on a carburetor, and that air is then translated into a need for fuel. And instead of having a jet that we adjust, we just have a parameter that we raise or lower in order to make it richer or leaner. So hopefully this helps some of you guys out. Stick around, we're gonna be diving into some other stuff. We're getting ready to do the Sniper EFI unboxing because we're gonna be throwing that on the 350 very soon. And then we'll dive into full-blown uh, standalone EFI tuning on a big block Chevy here in the next month or so. I'm super excited for that video series. Going to be a lot of interesting information, a lot of interesting ways of doing things on an older car that, uh, you know, it's, it might help some of these people out that want to modernize what they're doing, uh, bring it up to date, have that finite control, have, be able to dial in your timing curves uh, without having to worry about vacuum or mechanical advance and changing springs and weights and things like that. So it's really cool the options that we have available to us nowadays and how easy it is to implement these things on these classic cars. So I got plenty to get back to. I want to thank you as always for stopping by the garage. Remember, ABT, always be tuning.